So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year everyone! Today we are doing a very light video where I explain some of the hardest math memes that I could find. And we begin with this guy. So it's nothing hard. It's a familiar Maldebrot set, which is just used as a heart to express love for fractals. So we move on, right? So this one is a bit more subtle uh, and it refers to the definition of an integral. So an integral is an infinite sum of infinitely small values and delta x represents that infinitesimal. And this meme is quite funny because only when you add all these infinitesimal values together, you get the integral. So all of these hands represent very small values, but together they do something meaningful. Right, this one is also not that hard and it simply refers to the inverse functions. So the joke here is that the opposite of yes is no. So I think what they're saying is that if you're taking a function of yes and you inverse it, you get something negative like a no. And it's a somewhat cumbersome way of expressing no, which is what this progression from no, nope to yopened is kind of representing. So it's a bit silly, but still kind of makes sense. Right, so here's a hard one. On the left, we have a symbol for complex numbers. And on the right, well, let's explain it. So this letter R stands for real numbers, which is all integers plus all irrational numbers. And R with square brackets and X inside it stands for all possible polynomials with coefficients taken from R. For example, you might have X squared plus root two X plus three or whatever. And this little dash is sort of representing division by X squared plus one but not quite. So the official name for this thing is a quotient ring, which is a bit like binary numbers, right? So if you want to take binary numbers, you take Z, you take all integers, and you do quotient of them with respect to two Z. So now you only have two equivalence classes, zero and one, which is effectively just zero and one, giving you the binary system. So what this meme is saying is that this quotient ring is actually the same as complex numbers, which is true, but they're not equal, but rather isomorphic, meaning that they have exactly the same structure, although they are different sets. So it means that if you take two polynomials from that quotient ring and you multiply them or add them or divide them, they will behave in exactly the same way as complex numbers do. So anyway, I will leave all the links in the description and you can find a more comprehensive review of these concepts there. Okay, so this one is again from calculus. The traditional way of representing a derivative is df divided by dx, where f is some function, and f with a little dash on top called f prime is a slightly easier way of representing a derivative. But the funny thing is uh, in the last line, where they are inverting the symbol of an integral. So this refers to the thing where you call an integral an antiderivative, which is a bit of an abuse of notation. So when you invert the integral, you make it anti-antiderivative, making it just a derivative. Of course, this is illegal in mathematics, so this is a, this is a proper joke. Please don't do this at home. Um, <laughs> right, right. So this one is more physics-y than a mathematics joke. So another way of representing a derivative is not with a dash, but with a dot. But specifically, a dot is used when you consider a derivative with respect to time. This is just another convention. So instead of writing dr by dt, you just write r dot, and it means the same thing. So what's funny about this picture is that you very rarely consider a ninth derivative of something. So you, you may take the first derivative to take the speed, you can differentiate it again to get the acceleration, but if you want to get to the ninth derivative, you have to write nine dots on top of R, which just looks funny. So this is a bit of a nerdy meme for physicists. And moving on rather naturally from that picture, we now have this guy, and this one is about a physics jargon so just like I said, the first derivative in physics usually means speed. The second derivative usually stands for acceleration, but sometimes they also consider a third derivative. And for some reason, these guys decided to call it a jerk. So the way you should read this meme is don't be such a jerk. I don't know, just uh, blame physics for this. 
Um, <laughs> all right, all right, so coming back to mathematics, this is perhaps my favorite one out of the entire collection I'm showing today. So of course this refers to a very, very famous thing that one plus two plus three and so on, this infinite sum is equal to minus one over 12. So many people think that it's true, which is not right. So the way it works is you start with Riemann's zeta function, which is the same function, which is the subject of one of the millennium prize problems. And you notice that you can substitute different values for s. And of course, if that value is negative, the sum, the zeta function should diverge. However, if you consider this function on a complex plane, it will converge in the positive part of the ACs. And then there is something called analytic continuation of that function to the entire complex plane. And what's interesting is that if you substitute minus one to zeta function, which is being analytically continued to the entire plane, you do get minus one twelfth. So what this meme is saying is that zeta function of minus one is equal to one plus two plus three by definition, and it is equal to minus one over 12 according to the analytical continuation, but it is wrong to forget about the zeta function and simply claim that one plus two plus three is minus one twelfth. Never do that. It's wrong. Right, so um, here's another funny one referring to the works of Escher, who was a famous artist who was playing a lot with symmetry and pictures that have a double meaning. So if you simply understand his art, uh, you will notice that his legs and the towel he is lying on are, are not quite working out visually. So this is what the joke is about. So if you were ever interested in, in mathematics deeply, you get it. So now, oh, Right, so perhaps this is the hardest one of the entire collection and it refers to Newton's second law. You, so you start with a little dog which has f equals ma, which is the simplest way of expressing Newton's second law. But of course, acceleration and mass can change with time. This is how you go to the second dog where mass and acceleration are variables that can change with time. So when you go to the third one, I think, I think what it's doing is expressing Newton's second law on a manifold. So, so, so the two previous dogs are dealing with Euclidean spaces, the spaces we are used to, where all the vectors are orthogonal, you have x, y, and z, nice and easy. But of course, but of course sometimes you are working on a curved surface where the geometry is different. So this third guy is referring to that, but I'm really not sure what the last guy is all about. It should be some, you know, even, even harder way of expressing stuff on a manifold, but I'm, I'm, I'm literally not sure. But if you can help me figure it out, please leave your comments in the description. It's, it's important, I don't know. Anyway, guys, this is everything I have for you today. If you enjoy it, and if you enjoy this Christmas tree, please hit a like, subscribe, and see you next time.